factor and then we see the positive, the positive, the positive value. The model makes the rules, right? When I called the exhibition in real life, I, I, I wanted to suggest a few things. First of all, when you step into a museum, you don't step out of the real world into a sort of a dream world. You actually step even closer. It's like seeing reality in a higher definition, in higher granularity. The exhibition here works from 30 years, has dealt with you know, questions around ecology, sustainability, but also just atmosphere and ephemera. How do I touch what is normally considered untouchable? Like the air or the ephemera uh, of the world in which we live. How do I take something that I don't understand, data about the glaciers, and I make it tangible? What does that have to do with me as a little person in civic society? Can I even do something as a single person? And obviously I would like to think, if we can convince people, yes, a single person can do something, then it actually makes a huge difference. And this notion of feeling, well, I'm actually worth something. I am capable of contributing with something important. I think this is what art has fundamentally always dealt with, the questions of identity and existentialism, right? It's about, am I in the world or am I outside the world? Well, I, I, I think you are in real life, right? You are in the world and you don't really have a choice but to act on that. But all of those works are ones that have to be seen in real life. Looking at pictures of them on your screens or on your Instagram feed will never be a substitute to being in the space with them. For instance, the moss wall smells. You won't get that if you're looking at a picture of it. He thinks that sometimes the climate emergency is communicated only in a discourse of fear and wants to change the way we think about it to a discourse of enjoyment and love. You know, what do I love about the world and why should I care about it?